Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee again with SEC 210. Today I'm going to be going over Packet Tracer 25.3.10, which is Explore a NetFlow implementation. All right, um, in my course, uh, it has 10 questions to answer. Um, so make sure you answer those before you submit. And I don't need the, the .pka file for this one. I just need the answers to the questions. All right, um, so the background in this activity, you would use Packet Tracer to create network traffic and observe the corresponding NetFlow records uh, in a NetFlow collector. Packet Tracer offers a basic simulation of NetFlow functionality. It is not a replacement for learning NetFlow on physical equipment. Some differences may exist between the NetFlow flow records generated by Packet Tracer and by records created by full featured network equipment. All right, so, um, and just to let you know, I've had this thing up actually since yesterday. For some reason, the NetFlow collector wasn't collecting the um, the NetFlows. You can see it now; it's done it, but it's been taking like maybe 15, 20 minutes to show up. So um, when you guys do it, just realize that that's gonna probably be an issue. All right, so you're gonna see that this is just gonna be blank when you first bring it up. So I'm gonna move it off the screen. All right, so from the NetFlow collector, click the Desktop tab. All right, so Notice I'm clicking on desktop tab. Here I'll go out. Desktop tab. Scroll down on the left side. Netflow collectors right there. All right, yours will be empty. All right, click on the on radio button to activate the collector as necessary. Mine's already on. Um, the other times I tried it, it was already on also. Uh, position and size of the window so that it is visible from the packet tracer topology window. All right, ping the default gateway from PC1. All right, so here's PC1, and notice on my topology, I'm pinging from PC1, which is 10.0.0.10, uh, through the switch one, and then out to the default gateway, uh, which is the edge router's gigabit 00 interface. All right, I've already done that. I'm not going to do it again, but um, just know I've already done that. And if you guys do it, matter of fact, what was happening is I would ping from PC1, nothing would show up in the NetFlow collector. I'd ping PC2, that one would start showing up. But it, there was like a big lag between um, actual doing the pings and um, getting the NetFlow information back. Now I'll let you know what's happening. Um, I'm going through PC1, I'm going out of the switch. I'm going out to the interface of the edge router, gigabit 00 network, or interface rather. If you see right here, Enable show. I'll just do a show run. Notice we have a flow exporter which is named my flow X destination 10.0.0.100 using the UDP port 9996. And the NetFlow collector is this server right here on the inside interface of our um, edge router. All right, there is also, I'm going to hit tab, spacebar. All right, flow monitor. Mon1, all right, so that's recording this, and the exporter is exporting it to, which is MyFlow X, right here, is exporting it to this uh, server. All right, so this is all the, all the um, information it's gonna show you, it's gonna display to you. All right, so that's, I guess that's about it. If you notice, Right here, interface gigabit ethernet 00, that has the IP flow monitor mod 1 input. All right, so anything coming in. All right, this is the actual IP address of the interface. All right, all the other stuff we don't have to really worry about. Um, on the serial, see the, the outside interface, serial 001, that has IP flow monitor mod 1 input. All right, and notice it has an outside IP address. All right, so that's about it for that. <clears throat> okay, the, the big thing is your NetFlows wouldn't show up for a while. Sometimes they did for me, sometimes they didn't. So ping command to test uh, connectivity to default gateway uh, pin 001. All right, and it says after a brief delay, the NetFlow collector screen will display a pie chart. Notice mine's displaying, and if I scroll over, 
this is the source address. All right, notice source address is from dot ten, destinations dot one my uh, default gateway, and then it looks like I actually pinged from PC three also trying to make it work. So you guys will probably just see a circle with, and these colors will these colors won't correspond to the physical or the actual IP addresses. It'll change uh, based on. Uh, which you know it's like chronological which which you ping to that um, NetFlow collector or send information from the, the edge router into the NetFlow collector alright so note the first set of pings uh, may not be sent to the NetFlow collector because the ARP process must first resolve IP and MAC addresses after 30 seconds the pie chart does not appear uh, ping the default gateway again. I tried that too and it wouldn't work in. Click either the pie chart or the legend entry to display the re flow record details. So notice here, these are my flow record details. Notice I have timestamps, uh, TCP flags. Also down here, notice the in interface input, gigabit 00, zero interface output. It didn't traverse the uh, router so it's not it doesn't have an interface output all right so <clears throat> excuse me all right so the flow record will have entries similar to the ones below your timestamps will be different all right so you have all these entries and check those out all right notice right here interface output is null this is the interface of the flow exporter that collected the flow in the output direction out of the monitoring device interface, the value is null because it was a ping to an in input interface. All right, so in this case, the flow represents the ICMP ping from host 10.0.0.10 to 10.0.0.1. Four ping packets were uh, were in the flow. All right, that's why I didn't re-ping. That's right here. This one you guys should be looking at. Notice number of packets four, because it tried the ping four times, or I got responses four times. All right, let's see. To see traffic that matches a bi-directional session, the next flow exporter will need to be configured to collect flows entering and leaving the network. All right, create additional traffic. Click PC2, desktop, and again, remember, you're not going to have all the entries in your NetFlow collector that I have. So I'm going to go to PC2 Desktop and open the command prompt. I'm going to ping 10.0.0.1. All right, my pings are going through and I'm getting responses back. What do you expect to see in the NetFlow collector flow records? You guys can put down what you think. All right, will the statistics for the existing flow record change or will a new flow appear in the pie chart? Well, if you see there, and notice I'm not looking at PC names, I'm looking at the actual IP addresses for the source. All right, destination. All right, notice the four packets also there. Timestamp. All right, so I'll let you guys answer that. Return to PC1 and repeat the ping to the gateway. How will this traffic be represented? I guess you guys could guess, but I'm going to do it. I'll do an up arrow. Pings are going through, so that's good. All right, notice I didn't get a fourth entry showing up. You guys only have two. And matter of fact, this hasn't. Oh, there we go. Notice how it changed. It takes a little while, but notice we have four sets of, of ping requests. This bottom one, which is PC1, it got another request. All right. As a new segment in the 
And actually, I should have changed this answer. I should have took that out. How will this traffic be represented as a new segment in the pie chart, or will it modify the values in the existing record flow record? Uh, notice right there. Let me scroll over. All right, so I'll let you guys answer that. Issue pings from PC3 and PC4. I've already done PC3, which is dot 12. I'm going to do PC4. Click desktop command prompt. Ping 10.0.0.1. All right, pings are going across. Just give it, give it time. So I see my ping, and there we go. And notice how I said the the colors will change. That this pink part that was actually that's PC one, even though it was yellow. Now it changed colors. All right, what should happen to the display in the NetFlow collector? You guys can explain what happened, but basically it just popped in another uh, piece of the pie, and it changed colors. All right, so part two, observe NetFlow records for the session that enters and leaves the collector. All right, so the NetFlow exporter has been configured to collect flows that exit the LAN and enter the router from the internet. Access the web server by IP address. Before continuing, power cycle the NetFlow collector to clear the flows. All right, so what we'll do is click NetFlow collector, physical tab, all right, and you see a picture. I can't really zoom in on this, but you see a picture of the physical like box of the um, server. All right, click the red power button to turn off the server. The red power button is, I have to make this thing bigger, is right there below the, um, has a couple modules for networking. Click that one time. The little uh, yellow light goes off. Click it again. Oh, I can zoom in now. All right, so that's what that looks like. On, turn it off again. The little light goes out. All right, so I'm turning it back on. All right, and then go ahead and click desktop. Click the NetFlow collector icon. Click the scroll down on the left. All right, notice how it's off. I'm going to click on. All right, close the NetFlow collector window. Before you access a web server from PC1, predict how many flows uh, will there be in the pie chart. All right, so we're going from PC1 out to the web server. So we're going through a switch, out one. Uh, Full gateway interface on the edge router, out a serial interface on the outside. All right, and then we're getting to the um, web server. So I'll let you guys answer that. That should have an answer on it. Let me do this. From your knowledge of network protocols and NetFlow, predict the values for the web page request leaving the LAN. And so that, that answer is, you just fill in all that stuff. So going from PC1, source IP address is going to be here. All right. Destination is going to be there. This is 1025 5000 MS Windows default, which is what P, uh, Pack Tracer uses. This is an approximate value. Destination port. All right, so it's going to, uh, I would assume, a web. Just a web server, not secure, so port 80. Uh, input interface would be just its standard interface. 
All right. Output interface. Would be the same output, that same interface. Predictive values for the web page reply entering the NetFlow exporter router from the internet. All right, so the source IP address would be probably that one. Destination IP address would be um, this external IP address. All right, source port will be port 80. Destination port's that. Somewhere in that uh, input interface, probably be that one. Output would be that one. All right, so click PC1 desktop, close the command prompt window. All right, click the web browser. Enter the 192.0.2.100. And notice that that's the www.example.com. Click go. Well, good. Last time I did, that didn't work either, so that's good. All right. After a short delay, a new pie chart will appear in the NetFlow collector. You will see at least two pie segments for the HTTP request and response. You might see a third segment if the ARP cache for PC1 timed out. Click, click each HTTP PI segment to display the record and verify your predictions. All right, so I'm just going to close that down. Go back to NetFlow Collector. Oh, I missed one step. Hang on a second. This is going to add, add another entry, but I want to go to it. To uh, 100. All right, click the copyrights. All right, so that's going to add another entry there. Go into that web, that page, copyrights.html page. All right. So let's see, one to six, one of six, so it started here. All right, so source address was outside. All right, started there. All right, the source port 80, like I said, destination, Destination port 1026. All right. And then it went to from here. So basically, we had a packet going from PC1 out to the edge. And then from the edge, the edge responded back to the NetFlow collector. And then where's number two? Started here, the one here, and from 100 out to the web page. All right, destination port 80. All right, and then from here back to the NetFlow collector because we went through here. All right, then we went from another packet from there all the way back up to PC1. And then let's see. And then I did an extra, an extra ping. Or actually, I went back to the, um, I believe that was my extra access to the example.com. All right, so you guys wouldn't have this 
One, two, three, four, five. The sixth piece. And notice here, interface input, gigabit zero, zero, and then gigabit, uh, interface output, zero, 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 one. All right, so, so explain what happened. Compare the port number on the host for the flows. I'll let you guys do that. You really need to do this yourselves, though, and you see what happens. Compare the flows aside from the obvious timestamp, source, and destination address, port, and interfaces. Differences, what else is different between the request and, and response flows? Well, definitely the um, request TCP flag is different. All right, notice the flag there is different. All right, so I'll let you guys answer that. And yes, I intentionally don't give you guys all the answers to these. <laughs> all right, because I want you guys to do this, this yourselves. All right, so access the web server by URL. Power cycle the NetFlow collector to clear the flows. All right, so we're going to go here. Physical. I'm already zoomed in, so that's good. So turn, turn back on the NetFlow collector service, which I didn't do that yet. Click there, turn it on. All right, so we're on now. What do you think you will see in the NetFlow collector display? I'll let you guys answer that, but you'll obviously you'll see what I'm going to do. It knows that it hadn't converged yet, so I'm going to do fast forward time. All right, so on PC1, so now instead of doing the IP address, we're actually going to do the URL. Example.com. Make sure don't hit enter. Actually, click the go button. For some reason, that didn't work. All right. As the flows are displayed, inspect each flow record. You can see now nothing's showing up. Oh, there we go, finally. All right, so we got one entry so far. What values do you see for the IP protocol field? Oh, there we go. Now, notice we're getting a whole bunch now. And notice 105, so it started here. I'm going to take that back. Destination. It should have started here. Go that way. All right, started here from PC1, going out to example.com. And then it flipped around. And then it went out to the 192.0.2.254 is actually our, if you look right here, closes down that under IP configuration. Notice that's our, IP, our DNS server. So it translated the, um, the URL into the actual IP address. All right, and then notice source port 53, that's DNS. It's not port 80 for a web, uh, unsecure website. All right, notice 53. Those get kind of confusing, but you have four flows. All right, and that's really it. So what values do you see for the IP protocol field of the net, of the flow record? What do these values mean? And again, let me start with the first one. So once we start doing our TCP handshake, we're just assigned a port. So there's our port coming from our um, source port from our PC. And then destination port is what the web server is listening on if it's not a secure website. All right, then it goes, gets response back. All right, then it goes to 
the DNS translates using port, listening port uh, 53 translates the IP address uh, the URL into the IP address all right here's where it and we the PC learns that all right and then sends out a destination port source port let me make sure I'm doing this right okay so yeah the DNS sent a pa uh, packet back to PC1 saying, all right, this example.com is actually 192.0.2.100. So it told, told that back. I'm just going to that ring. All right. And then finally, the, um, oh, that was the last one, right? One, two. And that's it. Yep, four of them. All right. Yeah, that th this is kind of a tricky um, packet tracer because it takes a while for the NetFlow collector to values to update. But just make sure you um, answer those ten questions. I know one was like a duplicate question, and then upload that thing to Moodle for um, grades, and that's all you need to do. All right. Thanks for watching.